So I'd like to introduce local Les Katie, um, who also lives in Northampton, and we're going to start with where does a running, running tail begin? Okay, so my running tale did not begin at school. It began at later life. I have a funny story that I love to tell people about how I used to write my own sick notes for PE. And now I find it really amusing that I run half marathons for fun and take part in loads of events and so on, because I actually hated sport and I really felt that running wouldn't be, it wouldn't be for me. And I got to about 23, 24, and I went on a weight loss journey. I try not to talk about this too much these days because I think that if you decide to run purely for weight loss, you, you stop enjoying it. But it was where I started, and it's really important to mention it because this is a, a very valid starting point for a lot of people. And it was incredibly tough for me. Some people can ability, their bodies will just, just do it. Whereas with me, I kind of started with a couch to 5K type system and it felt like it felt like I was never going to get there. Like everybody else was running 5K, 10K, and everyone else was really fast. They could run half marathons. And I, I was struggling to get to, to 5K without stopping. And I think it's really important to look back and remember these things because I might not have been the quickest to get onto it. But once I got there there was kind of no stopping me and it opened up this whole great big world and I've never looked back so yeah it, it started from being the least sporty person ever to to being obsessed with it, it just shows it's never too late so your obsession then led to not just physically running do you um Marshall before we go on to the other stuff that you've expanded to do you Marshall, do you support running clubs? Do you, you know, um, races or are you just a runner? Well, I personally don't think I do enough. Now, I have marshaled before and it was the most fun thing ever. I marshaled on a couple of obstacle race course runs and handing out sweets and encouraging people over obstacles and so on, because that's something I went on to do. Um, I haven't done one for a couple of years now, but I got really into that scene. And I think it's the most incredibly exciting and rewarding people because I love encouraging people and I know how it feels that somebody just saying you're doing great yeah. actually makes a lot of difference and I really strongly feel that I don't do enough I really wanted to marshal that part run but because of this extraordinary year I haven't got around to do that and that's not an excuse I need to get around to do it when it comes to running clubs I've never joined a running club actually I'd quite like to come and meet your gang and come and run with people because I don't do it enough and I think that the social element of running is really really nice and I think it's really important and I think the reason I haven't and I'm going to be really honest here is because I've always had quite a lot of anxiety about how I would fit into a running club would That's, I be quick enough you're not the would first I to say, say the right it. thing you know, it's, it's such a common thing you know could I keep up with people or would you know uh, would we get along or you know well if I need to go pee in a bush <laughs> you know, all this sort of stuff I just, I'm sorry I just just say what comes off into my mind no this is good I, uh, we all think it <laughs> um, we all think it and so on and um, I again I think it's never too late to sit back and go you know what why am I not doing these things and rather than just thinking about it I'm going to do it because it's it's good to be social. So then take us to the next journey then because you're not just a runner. <laughs> when, when did the next level go? Was it the blog? Was it the podcast? You know, you have expanded. Please share your journey, how you went beyond not just being a runner, okay. but sharing with others. Okay, so... It's a bit of a story, so I'll try and compress it for you. When I started my fitness and health journey in my early 20s, so this was 10 plus years, 10, 12 years ago, the fitness scene was quite limited for women. We didn't have as much social media and interaction as we do right now. And I found from running that I really liked, um, oh, I really liked, I got into climbing. And I started taking climbing quite seriously. I took on some really big um, alpine routes and some pretty serious stuff. And I used running as a way to get fitter and fitter. And this took me way, way out of my comfort zone. And it taught me that a lot about myself 
and a lot about I had a lot of uh, shyness quite a lot of anxiety I never thought that I was good enough because I would hear from people that you know you can't do that or you, you fail and so on and that was as it taught me that you're so much capable than you think you are I think a lot of us think we're really we're set to the limitations that we have inside our heads and I just went on some really amazing journeys and some really amazing life-changing adventures and I'm so thankful for that um that, that incredible experience and I got to about 27 28 and I was really lonely I was just working, 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 saving up to go on uh, on trips and so on. And um, I had a really, really teeny, like, one of, actually, I think what I'm doing is quite interesting, hopefully. I, I will get the little space on the internet and I would start a blog. And back then, blogs were quite small. We still didn't have Instagram, I think probably just coming in sorry 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 infantry. can i just stop you there sorry sorry um twitter I... was so much smaller we didn't have sorry like TikTok or anything. So, katie sorry sorry the sounds that my internet my yeah, end has gone a bit unstable i don't know what's going on oh. but it when you said like I can't hear you. oh sorry can you hear me now hear me now i can hear yeah. you yeah sorry oh that's Hi, good you. the bit before it went crackly was you said the um it was a up to the point where you went as if you went to say tiny and then it I didn't hear after that what you yeah, said okay you, do you okay. know where I meant yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, I think I know where you meant yeah I think <laughs> sorry about this uh, I don't know what's uh, going what? zoom it's and fine. headsets it's just like oh. <laughs> but we can edit I edit is our friend <laughs> okay sure sure if you need anything you just shout me I'll be here to help where my blog first started, it was really tiny and I didn't know what I was doing. And the whole blogging community was really very, very small. And it started um, as a way to document some of my adventures and share some of the things I was doing. I had absolutely no expectations from it. And gradually more people started reading. I started connecting with more people, which was really um, exciting. And I started to build a little community of people that I would speak to on a regular basis. And that felt, felt really special, actually. And it was really enjoyable. And then the health scene kind of started taking off quite a lot online. And what really um, excited me about it is we had an opportunity to give real voices a talk I'm not saying that these people at the top aren't real voices they are and they're relevant but I think that it's um, incredibly helpful and interesting to see a really diverse mix of Agreed. people and blogging enabled me to encourage it yeah it's great isn't it because we I, I like seeing so many different abilities ages weights races you know I want to hear your, your story and it, it just gradually kind of, uh, I'd say, got bigger and bigger. I, sp I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy on it. And it really acted as an amazing motivator. I, I met my best friend on Twitter. I met like a community of people that I could do things with locally. And it felt really special. Um, I then got into obstacle racing. I then started running longer distances. I started doing mad things like open water swimming because I was challenged by a company. They said, you know, would you, would you take on an open water swim? And, and um and write about it and i just like i went home and i said to my husband i said i'm gonna I'm gonna swim 800 meters open water we both nearly fell off the sofa laughing it's like when did you last swim i don't know i don't know the things i do i do them because i can't do them and i'm not scared about being a beginner and i think if anyone takes one thing from that like please don't be scared please if, if it goes from running 5k to 10k or going for a swim or or or, or going to park run or whatever it is or picking up a kettlebell that 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 really frightens you have a go it's 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 really okay to be a beginner and i just kept kind of expanding and so on sometimes it's really hard sometimes it, it's you know we, we get caught up in this little bubble of comparison and i think you know it, it, it is a highlight reel it looks like everyone's doing really great all the time and everyone's just brilliant <laughs> reality is sometimes this is like you know don't worry guys i suck today <laughs> and this is just fine and um i started the podcast 
it's very very recent when lockdown started and I felt really terrified about this but I wanted a chance to to talk rather than write because I appreciated that not everyone wants to sit down and read a podcast some people like to um to walk and listen and so on and I wanted to to share some stories perhaps a little bit more intimately because sometimes I think the spoken word can be I think writing if you're an <clears throat> incredible writer can be excuse me <coughs> I'm gonna Oh, okay. sorry, we'll sorry. edit that bit. We'll edit, edit that, that bit. Bit. I'm, water. I'm so sorry. Um, um, yeah, I do beg your pardon. No, no, that's very fine. rude about me. And um, I'll have I a cup of wanted, tea. Yeah, have a cup of tea, my friend. Go for it. <laughs> I just wanted to. Um, I wanted to try something different. Again, I go back to the whole thing of um, I've never done this before. And you think, well, am I going to be rubbish? Is anyone going to listen? And I just try and apply that to as many different areas of my life as possible. But I notice um, on the blog, you do focus a hell of a lot on mental health. What's yeah. the feedback? And obviously it helps you a lot. And, it, you know, when you I, write I just, it. I think it's so therapeutic. And I think it's so important. And I think running and my mental health really come together very well I've had a lot of struggles and I feel very strongly about sharing stories with people and that's why I try and point out that things are highlight reels I like talking about when I feel quite low but I try and come up with more positive ways of dealing with it and share that story with other people I feel very strongly about male mental health as well I think that I have a real problem with um the whole kind of man up concept i think it's really important as humans we we normalize talking about not always feeling great and not always feeling positive and i think that lockdown for example has been a really tough time i was going to mention we've, that yeah we've spent we've spent so much time with ourselves and our thoughts and sometimes we have to unpack these boxes that we don't necessarily want to unpack you know we have to think about things that we might we might struggle with and there are so many different layers to that. Like I talk about blogging as positively as I can, but the reason I didn't want to um, focus hugely on weight loss um, being the reason why I started running because I had a lot of uh, mental health issues surrounding food as well. And I think that is, I think it's hard to deny that there are a lot of disorders in people that do use social media on a regular basis and so on. You know, I think a lot of us kind of, get that fear of comparison and feel like we have to keep up with people and we do things that perhaps aren't the healthiest and I had a kind of it's been a long expansive journey and I like to talk about it people because I don't want to I'm flawed I'm, I'm a human I'm yeah. imperfect and 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 sometimes my my, my brain is really glitchy and I can't <laughs> help it it's just how it is guys so yeah so how are you finding COVID at the moment and those around you? Like, do you feel, I know from myself, um, I've been, as you might know, the strong one in the sense that uh, the group to think, okay, I'll treat this. I'll bring my positivity of my personality out and help people in the ways that I can by having fun. You know, I fancy dress, I, you know, I dance and in the street, you know, do running around the block. What sort of things have you done in COVID that's, because you are a very bubbly personality, you do the blogging, you do the podcast. Have you used that? Have you intensified that? Sorry, that's the right question I should ask you. Have you intensified it during the COVID lockdown? Yeah. Now, before I get started, can I just say I love your fancy dress and stuff like that. I think it's wonderful and I think it's so heartwarming for people like you are so important. So that is really special. I just wanted to note that because it's, it's oh, <laughs> nuts. <laughs> no, it's great. I love that. I love it. I feel like um, it's been an amazing opportunity as I say to unpack boxes and when I started with the podcast for example it was it felt quite quite intimate and it felt quite nice to be able to share some of those stories and us to have the time to take back and listen and also I took some time off the blog I took a week social media well two week social media break and it was the most enlightening thing I've done in a long, long time. And I recommend that if anyone feels like they're struggling or perhaps they're not paying attention enough to, 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 to things that really matter or they need to refocus, because I think that some people, I had a real low at the beginning. I was really frightened. And 
taking a couple of weeks off gave me an opportunity to really refocus on positivity and some of the messages that I wanted to put forwards. And I just feel like it's been this incredible time for growth. And I think it's given us a really great time and opportunity to consider what's not serving us as well. And I decided to start as I've, I've I plan quite far in advance with my blog and I've got quite a lot of stuff coming up and there are when I was unpacking boxes of things I started to realize what is making me happy and what's not making me happy yeah. and being able to share those stories like yesterday I sort of said I woke up and I had this great big workout planned and so on and my body just said no and I was like hey guys you know I hope that you're not like me but sometimes I have to give myself permission to say no and it's really important for us to, for me to share those, to share those stories on social media and say, if you just had to slow down and you just had to, uh, to, to step back and refocus on your family or refocus on what's important and so on, that's a really, really good thing. And I feel like I've done the best I can to keep my family and stuff and entertain you know there's just myself my husband and the cat here and it's been quite lonely at times but I think the video calling and this and the other it's been a really lovely opportunity to try and keep keep each other upbeat and I think it's not necessarily always a bad thing but there are obviously loads of really awful things that have happened during this time and I just think gratitude huge gratitude I'm healthy I'm alive. My family are healthy. My friends are healthy. Life is so good. And I think if you learn that, you learn that, that you've got everything, haven't you? Isn't it just fantastic? It's really that simple. So one point you did raise, and it is something that I feel, and it'd be good if you are, if that's one of your blogs as well, which I've learned as well amongst the runners in my group as well, and with, you know, friends and family and work colleagues, that it is a good idea to have a break with social media because I don't know about you but I wouldn't know I would be surprised if the increase of using Facebook Instagram Twitter has more than double tripled because that is the way that we've been able to communicate with our friends and family but at the same time seeing so much positivity can always have a negative effect yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think it, it's, social media is incredible. And I think it's wonderful that we have these ability to have these platforms where we can talk to people, where we can meet people, where we can share, like you say, positivity, where we can keep in contact with the family and the people that we, that we see as really important. And at the same time, I think also, I know I go back to the whole highlight reel over and over again. I think it highlighted the differences between people's lives. And I think that can be quite troublesome. Some people found it very, very easy. Some people stayed in good health. Some people stayed in work. Some people had, from a fitness point of view, fitness equipment at home and so on. Or they had lots of people with them or a garden. I follow a lot of people in London. And as we all know, here in Northampton, we've got a lot of space. The cost of living is, is significantly cheaper than London. But a lot of my audience and my friends are in London, whereas you don't have a garden. And it's very hard to look at people in Northampton that I'm not saying everyone watching this has a garden, but we have a little bit more space and a bit more freedom because we're not so compressed. And so then people that are a little bit more compressed or are in less happy situations, it can, while well, we're having a great time, like I'm trying to post positive memes and like, yeah, I'm so happy I got out for a walk today. I'm so happy I did this. You know, I'm having a really nice time just reading books, just sitting in the sun and being it. Um, it hasn't been easy for everybody. And I think learning when to cut off, when to say no, because I love Twitter. I have a love-hate relationship with Twitter, but it can be very, very negative and very, very yes. positive. And we've got all these people compressed in, and we're frightened. No, we could never have imagined this in a hundred years. Could we in our lifetime? We would have been like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, um, and it kind of, brings up a lot of different emotions doesn't it even for people that are very very um stable and you know rational thinking and so on and that's why i i really strongly believe in a break i say to people is it getting too much is it is it serving or is it not serving you if it's not serving you just take a few days off focus on what serves you pet pet your pet your dog walk around the block and and look at stuff in the park like look 
uh, around, look at the bushes and admire the trees and just take in the silence or listen to the birds tweet or bake a really delicious cake and enjoy it with people you care for or just the stuff that's really, really kind of, or watch that film you've been putting off for ages. Simple, but away from this whole kind of highlight reel of everyone looking flilted and glossy and great and living their best life ever. So yeah, every so often I think we just need to go, no, not today. It is true, though, that you were saying earlier, like, you know, about you get some people that have got really fit during lockdown. And (laughs) it's like you've either got those and I'm one of them that puts us put on the pounds or you've got because I've been injured runner. So I've not been able to take advantage of the the long distance. And then, you you know, you've got those that are super toned um, and you're just like, wow, you know, you've got the yin and the yang. Absolutely. But then I have, I have seen a great post on Facebook lately, which has been also in lockdown. You either become a drunk or, uh, or a chunk. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm becoming both. <laughs> yeah, <whoa. laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. It's the best feeling ever. I love food. And I just feel like um, it's so, it's so it's so interesting isn't it and if somebody just said to me you know what is the worst thing that could have come out of lockdown the last thing I would have said is gaining weight because when we're at home like food for me is is so important it's our fuel it's our energy but also it's social and it's enjoyable and it's part of um you know our everyday life it gets up it it fuels me for 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 a run um and it's an opportunity to sit down at the end of the day and just and just be and i feel like also if if somebody if you're having a hard time and an, an extra glass of wine is making you happy that's just so important and we need to kind of encourage people to to follow what makes them as long as it's relatively healthy you know what i'm trying to say you know like like please don't drink a bottle of wine five days a week you know uh, for the next uh, rest of the year i know it's been tough and everything but let's let's be rational here friends (laughs) um yeah moderation but um and also i think it's incredibly important if everyone's feeling uh, lost in a in a web of comparison or or worried about the weight and so on as a result of lockdown i ask people to please please remember this one thing if the worst thing of as a result of a kind of pandemic is you've put on 10 pounds it's not the worst thing in the world it's really not the worst thing in the world actually that's quite a good outcome and if you put on 10 pounds by just enjoying yourself then that's probably a really good outcome, actually. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to keep saying that to myself. <laughs> because it's... it's, it's oh. oh, you're gone. It's you're rational gone. because, oh, you know, we, people are, are losing their lives. Oh. I'm back now. I'm back. So you said it was important. It was important. It's important to remember that it's it's rational because some people have, uh, you know, have lost their lives, have lost their loved ones, have been incredibly ill, and so on. And if you're, you know, you've been on furlough, we've been very lucky to be able to work from home. But I appreciate this hasn't been an option for everybody. Um, jobs we have, have been to just lost be kind. Well, jobs you know. have been lost. You know, it's it's a really tough time, and we have to try and be kind to ourselves because it is so extraordinary and i think that it's hard on the other hand to watch people some people are thriving online like you say some people have got super super fit and i've come out with like their six packs and stuff like that and that's cool if that's thriving but if you're having a hard time and you know you're eating a six pack of donuts (laughs) then then eat the six bag of donuts stay healthy be happy you know do the best you can so yeah. mine's the big bar of dairy milk whole nuts sorry <laughs> it's just something so it's this it's the glossy purple packaging is you just know and you open it up and the smell hits you and you're like yeah just as you describe just as you describe the package the sound went and i think that's perfect (laughs) because i think for the listener they shouldn't really hear what attracts you to a chocolate bar (laughs) (laughs) so i love it what's your you know as someone that does do running and especially at the moment 
you know it is great for mental health if you have got your trainers and they're in the cupboards what would you say to someone to get them on now the benefits of even just walking getting out there I would say it's chasing the, um, the high the endorphins now people think that they have to run running doesn't work for everybody it's not necessarily great for everybody's joints it's not enjoyable for everybody and therefore i think if we take that element out there and you say to yourself i'm going to have a go i'm going to try starting it if it doesn't work i'm going to be really really accepting of that and i'm going to walk instead or you want to balance the two i think walking is incredible as is running because it's freedom it's an opportunity to get outside enjoy our surroundings it's an opportunity to switch off i find that when i'm outside and exercising i don't think about mundane things i think about creative stuff and you're taking your foot off the gas you're putting your foot onto a different pedal and i actually have a lot of my most creative thoughts when i'm not sitting at home watching the telly or scrolling my phone and i'm pottering around in the kitchen cooking or i'm going for a 15 minute walk around the block and i do just want to say you can go out for 10 15 minutes you don't have to go out for hours it might be that you have a big family or that you're very busy or that the weather's not good and so on and i think people don't do it because they think oh 10 15 minutes it's not worth it it's totally worth it it's really really worth it and that's really valid and it's, it's so important for us to to keep sharing those messages with people and also if you find that things are getting too much as i say taking the foot off the pedal type thing is it's an opportunity to to escape you listen to a podcast listen to some music take someone you love hold their hand and, and talk to them and it just gives us an opportunity to escape the four walls and you don't need an expensive pair of trainers to go for a walk or go for a run or anything like that you don't need to be head to toe in lycra you know nobody's watching nobody's judging you and you know and just just get out there and do you and it i really feel it's hard to go out for a walk or a run or a run walk or whatever you do or a cycle ride um and come back and think oh i feel really bad because i don't no, <laughs> i don't true, i might true. think i'm running late for all the other things i'm going to be fitting in but i never feel like oh that was a waste of time because it wasn't it was not a waste of time and yeah i just think it's really important to share that okay and so thanks for that and to end the the podcast can you let us know what is the title of your blog so people can find it and your title of your podcast okay so my main blog and my social media is under cake vs scales so cake v scales because it started off with my love of cake you might have noticed i quite like food um and um scales it was because it started off with a little bit of fitness and, and weight loss i put in the scales if i was to go back and do it now i wouldn't use the same term but it's what people know so oh, do you get that <laughs> i got that yeah um and my yeah yeah, yeah and my podcast is still very new and i'm still kind of like nourishing it and working with it and it's called am i supposed to say this because sometimes i say things and i think oh, was i supposed to say that okay i say that i haven't been sued yet or offended anyone yet so i think i'm doing okay <laughs> but who knows what will happen in the future <laughs> well, you've heard it here folks I guess yeah. it's the, the baby yeah. podcast hey. it's not offensive it's just mad yeah. Yeah. Hey. so um no thanks for this katie i'm gonna just stop